Hello, this is Tony Henderson Mayers and welcome to my channel. Uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and ring that bell so you will know every time I upload a new video. So every um, Sunday is my faith videos. Wednesday, kind of romance and um, some acting maybe. Um, Friday is usually business or acting or creative streams of income, different things like that. Um, and maybe I'm interviewing someone. But on Monday, that's when I upload um, new content, um, especially in the area of romance. So this video that you're about to see is a wise courtship joint. Kill your relationship. So what we try to do for, um, for everybody who's new, what we try to do is I try to do like maybe a 10, 15 minute little presentation and then we'll go into Q&A, okay? Okay. All right. So I want to talk about some of the main things that will kill your relationship. This is not all of them, but this is some of the main things, all right? We're going to keep it very simple today because there's a lot to kind of think about uh, in, in this regard. So the first thing is God, okay? Mm. Like, how did God kill my relationship? <laughs> but I wanna explain this a little bit further. One is that you, if you don't ask God for direction, it's going to kill your relationship. And a lot of people make this mistake, okay? People who um, don't believe in him and people who do believe in him. Um, it's so important to get direction, okay? So that you would yeah. be focused. That's like anything you do in life, okay? You have to have some sort of direction on where you're going, all right? We get direction through prayer. That's number one, all right? The other thing um, that will kill our relationship in regards to God, if we're not praying and asking for direction, um, one of the reasons why we don't do it is because we really don't trust him. But the truth yeah. of the matter is he knows what's best. Yes. <laughs> and you know, in church and stuff, you know, we, we know that, oh God, you know, hallelujah, we raise hands, we do all of that stuff. And that's wonderful. We should do that. But it should somehow trickle down into our everyday life. And so even though uh, this, the, the things that I'm going to talk about today is really basic, it's still really profound, okay, if you grasp that concept. concept. And he knows what's best. He knows the beginning, the middle, the end. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows the person that you're about to connect with. He knows the right timing. He knows how, uh, you know, your proclivities. He knows their idiosyncrasies. <laughs> he knows everything. So you want to connect to the power source. It's just like we do with our career. If we know someone knows, then we go and we sit up under their teaching or their wisdom, we have to do that with God. He knows what's best for us. Yes. All right. The other thing about God, this will kill your relationship if you don't get this concept in your head. He wants you to be happy. Yes, yes. So yes, many people yes. think that, you know, God is about rules and regulations and oh my gosh, he doesn't want me to be happy. He wants me to marry a holy man, which means he's going to be <laughs> He's going to be overweight. He's going to be bald. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh. And we just equate all of that, you know, with if, if it's holy, it's ugly. If it's holy, <laughs> it's not something else. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. And um, I'm so sorry to interrupt you too, but there are persons who will preach that to say, yeah. um, okay, he is godly, but I'm honestly not attracted to him. I honestly can't have a, a, a good conversation outside of um, us being connected to God, and which is very important, as you said. But I'm just not attracted to him. He yeah. probably, even financially, he is not responsible financially. And persons will say, oh, this is the will of God, which is not necessarily so. Absolutely so, right. Can, hello, darling. We got somebody else new here. Good to see you. you. We just got started. And I will greet you even more appropriately. Um, we do a, like about a 10-minute presentation, and then we open it up for Q&A. Um, while we're doing that, if you're really proficient in um, Zoom, 
um, in the chat area is a link for you to click and scroll down and put your email in the box uh, next to sign me up. And that's a way for me to stay connected with you, okay? Um, because sometimes we, we don't have a meeting and I wanna make sure you know. Okay, so these are the things that will kill our relationship, okay? The number one, God. We don't ask God for direction, okay? Mm -hmm. if you don't do that, you all, you are bound to mess up, okay? Unless you, he just show extra mercy on you and say, look at this person, <laughs> they so silly and they don't know. I'm going to help them out, okay? Mm -hmm. and unless he does that. We also mess up because uh, we don't realize he knows what's best. He knows us. He knows us better than we know ourselves, okay? Mm -hmm. And the last thing we talked about before this beautiful young lady came in, we said he wants you to be happy. We tend to think holiness means he's going to be ugly. He's going to be, you know, he's holy, but I'm not attracted to him. He's holy, but he's ugly. He's holy, but he's overweight. I'm like, No, God wants you to be happy. He knows what's going to make you happy. He knows what you're attracted to, all right? So that is the groundwork that we need to have when we um, connect with other people. Um, if not, if we don't have that concept about God going in, we could kill the relationship before it starts. All right, let's go to the next one. The other thing is self. That self can kill your relationship. How? Well, one thing, how do you feel about yourself? I see a lot of people in wonderful relationships, have a wonderful person with them, but they kill the relationship because of low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. They believe they're ugly or whatever. And no matter how many times the man tells them they're beautiful, you know, they play into that past um, record that was put in their head when they were a child or from the last abusive relationship, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, they bring that over into the relationship. We have to do the work, guys. We got to do our self work. When I was traveling, talking about wise courtship, I wrote the book Wise Courtship. Here it is, right here. I wrote the book Wise Courtship from the premise that you were ready to get married. That's how I wrote the, the book. But when I began to travel and tour, do the radio shows and television and all that stuff, I found out that some people, um, they weren't ready because of their own self. Their self was getting in the way, all right? So how do you feel about yourself? You know, most women have a ton of things they don't like about their body and their face and their hair and all of that. <laughs> they got a ton of things. You know, I know that we want to improve ourselves, but can we honestly look in the mirror and look at ourselves and say, I like what God made. Yes. I'm satisfied. He didn't yeah. make a mistake. I'm beautiful. I don't yeah. have to look like Barbie. I don't have to be blonde. I don't have to have blue eyes. I don't have to have that same shape as the Barbie doll. I am beautiful the way God made me. It's important. Okay. So self can kill your relationship. Also, have you unpacked your baggage? Okay. <laughs> What are the things <laughs> you are carrying? Ugh. Some of us are carrying more things than others. Some of us really believe all men are dogs, but we'll still try to date them. We'll still try to sleep. <laughs> I'm usually like, okay, really? <laughs> what type of baggage do you have? Do you believe that you can be loved? Do you believe uh, that there are good men out there? Do you believe that... Um, uh, that uh, what you know that you can handle your money well, or uh, that you can trust somebody else to put to merge your money together. You know, a lot of times when people have issues with money, it's coming from some sort of baggage that has yeah. not been resolved. Okay, so there's a lot. I probably will go into a series about are you ready for a relationship emotionally, financially, spiritually, all of those types of things. We'll break that down. All right. So have you unpacked your baggage? Because you bringing baggage and him bringing baggage is just going to make a whole room full of baggage. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Okay? And I have a, I have a yes, question. Mm -hmm. Where were you eight years ago? Just say. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord was preparing me. Well, wait a minute. Eight I'm years ago. My God. 
I was um I was fighting with the Lord like right I'm not a writer I'm a speaker. <laughs> So that's what happens when you're not obedient, honey. That's true. <laughs> wow. Probably knocked down everything and said, okay, you're going to write this. Mm hmm. You, oh. <laughs> are you improving yourself? Mm. This is another way people can kill their relationship, okay, by not improving themselves. You just stay mm -hmm. stagnant where you are. You don't want to learn, you don't want to grow, you don't want to go out and meet people, you don't want to, you know, try new things. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to open up. One of the most profound things my mother told me when I was praying and believing God for a husband, and I said to her, I said, you know, I always thought I was going to marry one of the guys I grew up with. You know, I was a tomboy, so I thought I was going to, you know, marry one of the guys I grew up with, but they became my brothers, you know, and I said to my mother, I don't know what to do. And she said, change your circles. Mm -hmm. and as simple as that sounds, that was very profound because a lot of times we're stuck in the same thing. We go to work, church, come home. Go to work, church, come home. Go to work, church, come home. You got to open up your circles. Mm -hmm. So are you improving yourself? Are you learning? Are you growing? Are you, you know, are you headed toward where God is leading you? Do all of those things. You're not too old to do it. You're not too young. You're not too black. You're not too female. You still can be improving yourself. You still can be learning more about yourself. And this may not be just formal education, okay? This may be, you know what? I get, I get an attitude easy. You know, I need to work on that. You know what I'm saying? Or I need to, you know, improve my posture. I need to walk with a little bit more grace. I need to know how to do that. <laughs> Whatever, you know? <laughs> Anything. Mm -hmm. You want to check yourself out and make sure you're not the one killing your relationship before it even gets started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. Okay. We're really getting toward the end here because this is the third step, and then we got a bonus one. And then we're going to open this up for some QA, okay? Have you planned? Most people will kill their relationship because they won't plan. Are you preparing to recognize the right one? And you see the little wise courtship book down here at the bottom because you know that's what we're all about. Do you prepare yourself to recognize the person when they come? God could send you 50 great men. Yes. You'll never recognize them if you do not have the right training and you have not prepared yourself. They can slip right through your fingers. You won't even see them. Oh, he's so boring. <laughs> you know, you would rather have the guy with the dagger, right? <laughs> um, you won't recognize. Wow what God has for you. Yeah. So you've got to prepare to recognize. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have a strategy for weeding out prospects? Sounds like we in sales, but it's almost close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You got to be able to weed out them prospects. I didn't see an ugly woman come on this broadcast. I didn't see not an ugly woman. Oh, that's right. So that means <laughs> you have a lot of prospects. I mm. mean, you know, a lot of people looking like, mm, who that? Really? <laughs> Damn. Yes, ma'am. And the more you stick with us, and the more you use the what I call a wise culture philosophy, put these steps into practice. Uh huh. You want to start attracting people. Okay. So, do you have a strategy for weeding them out? Because what happens very often, if you didn't deal with yourself. Okay, your self-esteem issues, your self-worth issues, all that stuff, baggage, whatever. When somebody comes along. It's like, <laughs> and it's the first person and you just kind of go with the first person. You just so thrilled anybody likes you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, like, yes. You know that you are a, a wonderful person, not in a conceited way, not in a conceited way, but you know that, hey, I'm a decent person. You know, I love yes. God. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm interesting. I've got these different talents. You know what you bring to the table. Then you're not, you know, too shocked when somebody thinks you're great. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so you can begin to weed out who's real and who's fake, okay? Because the Bible teaches us about flattering tongues. Anybody can flatter you. That why are they flattering you? Is it coming from a genuine heart or is it coming from a, a person who's trying to get you to bed or who's trying to, you know, kind of bind you down from what when they see you accelerating or moving ahead, well, I'm, you know, let me get with her and give her about five babies, and she won't go nowhere. I hope I can see that plane. 
<laughs> or just put you in bondage if you're out of, of the flowering age. That's right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or do they want, my mother and I, we say this, <laughs> my mother's 79, and uh, mm -hmm. she's been a widow since she was 44. She just chose my mother. Wow. Um, and oh. so I say to her, I say, he just want a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> that part. Yeah, you get all this flattery, and it's because it's something behind it. You have to be yes. really good at weeding out things, and that's what wise yes. is all about. And the last one in planning: what are your uh, must-haves and your must-nots? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that list that he got to be tall, he must be six feet, and he got to make at least two hundred thousand a year, and he's got to walk a certain way. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> Okay. That's really silly, all right? Yes, yes, true, it's true, it's true. It's, true. Right. it's just not gonna work. But the must has, okay? What you, he has to have family values. I mean, things that are important to you. What what is really important to you? When you turn off the lights at night and you crawl into the bed, what is really important to you? When you all by yourself, you want somebody to love you for you. Yeah. Some of you, your faith is extremely important. Your family yes. is extremely important. So you you got to know your must-haves, and then you got to know your must-nots. Okay? You're like, no, he just can't be hitting me. That may be your must-not. I know that's my mother. He just cannot <laughs> try to hit yeah, me. He cannot call me out my name. Mm -hmm. You got to have that list mm -hmm. that has full meaning, and you got to plan. All of this is about planning. Mm -hmm. Most people kill their relationships because they don't plan. They kill yes. it because they don't consult God. They kill it because they don't consult what's what's going to can don't confront what's going on with themselves. And they kill it because they don't plan. Mm -hmm. And the bonus one, <laughs> I already got a hint there. The bonus one is faith. All right. You mm -hmm. have to believe to receive. Yes. I did a, a workshop called, well, actually a talk called um being single, saved, and satisfied. And I was talking about how that, 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 that mantra, sometimes we don't think about what it's saying. It's nothing wrong with it in general, but if that's not your belief that I'm, you know, I'm single, saved, and, and satisfied, then you shouldn't be saying it. Some people, that is their belief, right? But if you're believing God for something more, then you've got to, you can't say, well, you know, I'm 72 and it never happened. Well, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and live my life the way, you know, as a single person. No, you believe in God for something else. I'm sure Sarah, you know, she was past the age of having children. Mm -hmm. and, you know, she didn't say, oh, well, that's it. <laughs> At some point she had to say, you know what? I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe yes. it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. going to happen to me. Now you got to think about that. That's ridiculous. You're talking about a woman way in age, believing God to have a baby? Yeah. yeah too far, okay. But that's the kind of faith you have to have. Because people will tell you, oh, it's not going to happen for you. Or all the things that you believe in God for in your heart, that it's not going to happen. But you got to have the faith. If you don't have the faith, you killed the relationship before it started. Yeah. So, my dear ones, you know what hey, time Thanks it is. a lot for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to try to upload videos as much as possible. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Take care. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? Then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. All the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship Store.